Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We pray. <coughs> Dear Heavenly Father, through these words send your spirit to our hearts to comfort us for those who have gone before, to encourage us to tell others of the good news that Jesus raises the dead. We ask this in his name. Amen. Dear fellow sinners, give a joy to find Jesus in your sorrow. You know, at the graveside service of Ronald Reagan, his wife Nancy walked up to the casket, she touched it, and she broke down in tears. It was amazing that this woman spent the whole day through this state funeral, through all these things, didn't shed a tear. But at that moment, she cried. Her emotions overcame her. She didn't want to leave him go. That scene calls to mind the hurt that every person feels at the death of a loved one. It doesn't matter whether it's a spouse or whether it's a child or a mother or, or a friend. When, when someone you love dies, it hurts so much that at times you cannot help but cry. Well, let's keep that in mind as we consider our text with the statement, the word of Jesus raises the dead. Hearing first that Jesus has compassion on sorrowing sinners, and second, Jesus can turn you into joy. Our text begins. Soon afterwards, Jesus went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a great crowd went with him. And as he drew near the gate of the town, a man who had died was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and a considerable crowd from the town was with her. Well, Jesus and this crowd that was coming were coming to come into the city. And there was a funeral procession, so they had to wait. Those who knew the widow or her son didn't care that Jesus and his possession had to wait. They didn't care that the life of the town was being disrupted. They hurt. You know, at times, you know, we kind of experience the same kind of a delay. We're driving, we're trying to get somewhere. And then a funeral procession comes. A long. And probably our first thought is, oh, now I have to wait. We might not even consider the pain and the sorrow of the loved one of the deceased. You know, we're, we're such selfish sinners. We only think of ourselves often. But Jesus is not like that. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and he said to her, Do not weep. Jesus showed that mother, mother and the widow that he loved her. Jesus gave her this command, Do not weep, because she knew she needed that command. Her heart was broken. First, she lost her husband to death. Now, the son who provided for her. She, in many ways, was crying for herself. There wasn't any social security back then. Now, who was going to provide for her? Now, how was she going to live? Her, her son was gone. Now, Jesus' command, do not weep, also the mind and incident. Pastor Elmer, see, Pastor Elmer Semensky related to me. There was a woman who lost her husband. I don't know the name of the husband, so let's just call him Dick. Dick died. And after the funeral, this widow would come to Pastor Semensky, repeated, crying about how difficult it was. She would say, oh, it's so difficult to live without Dick. Without Dick, you can't go south for the winter. Without Dick, I can't go out to eat or go to fish fries or movies. Without Dick around, life is just worth not worth living. And he would speak the gospel to her about how Dick was in a better place and how God would take care of her. But she just kept going on about how terrible she had it. Finally, after a number of visits, he looked at her and said, You're not mourning for Dick. You are mourning for yourself. Believe the gospel. 
stop your crying, go on with your life. Back where it ends. And then Jesus came up and touched the Bible. Jesus did what was really unthinkable for a Jew. God had commanded him not to have anything to do with the dead. And the fire, the, the bearers stood still. Oh, now it's going to take even longer to enter the city. Do you know what the stopped? However, we didn't bother Jesus. He knew that this widow needed to be with him, to spend time with Jesus. See, Jesus knows the pain of every man and woman that they what we feel when we lose a loved one. He knows that we weep because we hurt. And how we wonder, how can I go on without that person? And at that time, the pain is so great, we cannot control it. You know, even when Christians lose a loved one to death, they, they weep. You know, they know and they believe that person is in a better place. It's where we all want to go. Yet, we weep. <coughs> I remember the day after my mother died. When I got the phone call the night, I didn't cry. As long as I didn't have to talk to anybody, I didn't cry. But my task was call her seven brothers or eight brothers and sisters. And every time I picked up the phone and they said hello, and I said who I was, and then I said, my mother died, I couldn't stop crying. I couldn't stop it. I knew she was in a better place. I believed she was in a better place. But the pain was not something I could take care of, control. I wanted her to stay on earth with me. I didn't want her to go to You know, that happens to everybody sooner or later, men and women. Unless you, you know, even though we think it, it's wrong for men to cry. We live in a society where men don't cry. You know, they aren't supposed to cry. There's a radio show, show that had a discussion on when it was all right for men to cry. You know, and, and all, you know, all sorts of answers came in. Oh, you can cry when your team wins. You can cry when your team loses. You can cry when you watch an especially touchy sports team. But it's not all right to cry. And you know, some people call it, no, it's not all right to cry if your team wins over. No man should ever cry, whether it be opposite or work. I mean, you might think it's trivial to even mention this, whether it's proper to cry after sporting events, but that show revealed the truth that men and women feel emotion and sorrow. It's part of the human being to feel happiness and sadness, to, to laugh and to cry, to be angry, to be calm. You know, when others get in our way, our emotions often move us to anger. We say, get out of my way. I want to get through. Our emotions give us pain when a loved one dies, when a loved one is ill. Now some of you will tell, now some will tell you, well, you got to keep a stiff upper lip, control your emotions. And yes, there's a, there's a point to that. But some will even go farther and say that when Jesus told the woman, do not weep, he was commanding all Christians never to weep at a funeral. Whoever says that's wrong. Jesus spoke this command to this woman. Alone. It wasn't a command where said, now I'm talking to this woman, but all of you, no, don't stop weeping right now. Through his apostle Paul, he made that clear these words. Brothers, we don't want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep. It's not a sin cry, to weep, to grieve. It's a sin to weep and to grieve without hope. You know, when Christians grieve, they keep in mind, well, Jesus raises the dead. 
When Christians read, they should spend time with Jesus. Hearing the gospel. Hearing that what he did when he walked on earth. <coughs> Pondering what he did uh, for that widow. You know, after he stopped the funeral possession, he, he, he said, Jesus said, Young man, I say to you, arise. And the dead man sat up and began to speak. At the word of Jesus, this dead man rose from the dead. And then Jesus gave him to his mother. You know, Jesus not only felt for the 